for context, uh, AWS has the highest market share in IaaS plus PaaS. So infrastructure as a service and then platform as a service. Uh, and, you know, so they are they, the, they are the 800 pound gorilla. And their market share in that has been very constant over the last, I think, five or six years, right, right in about the 30 percent uh, zone. So if you're a merchant silicon provider like Intel, NVIDIA, uh, Marvell, um, AMD, right, you want to be best friends with AWS. OK, but uh, I say but. Uh, so therefore, AWS, a lot of people want to do their their first out uh, merchant silicon offerings with them. Uh, AWS has been working 10 years on their own silicon, right? They made an acquisition uh, called uh, called Annapurna. And um, it um, essentially they started off uh, doing x86 server offload with with a chip called Nitro. And then they uh, came out with general purpose uh, silicon uh, for servers called called Graviton. Uh, and then they added what's called Inferentia for inference of AI uh, ML. And then uh, they added Trainium, which is for uh, training these workloads. So they literally have end to end. So well, what did they do at the show? So the f uh, first thing they did is they off uh, brought out a new piece of silicon again four versions in four years. This one is called Graviton 4. And Graviton 4, uh, uh, what, it, what it layers on is, first of all, higher performance for all the workloads the Graviton 1, 2, and 3 could do, but it also added a dual socket uh, capability. And dual socket capability uh, on a server um, is really good for uh, scale up workloads okay so the cloud has, has been defined as scale out where i've got a, a ton of servers and and if i need more capacity i go out to another server and then i find some novel ways to lower latency or share memory through things like uh things like uh rockham um and uh but when it comes to erp and when it comes to databases particularly uh, the legacy ones they love having two sockets okay and this is hard because you have to uh, manage memory, right? And you have to you have to manage memory not only between uh, the two sockets, but then you have to manage memory uh, as you as you scale this thing out. So, a little bit unsurprisingly, right? Uh, uh, there was a an announcement made with SAP and SAP HANA Cloud. Now, SAP HANA Cloud, for the record, is not yet Graviton four com uh, uh, compliant, uh, meaning certified. Uh, but Graviton 1, 2, and 3, and Jurgen Mueller from SAP uh, talked about, you know, getting a 35 to 40 percent uh, performance per watt advantage on SAP HANA Cloud uh, yeah. workloads. And so this is kind of the last bastion of, uh, of like, workloads that, that Graviton has gone after that, that, um, that they, they've now added to the portfolio. So, I mean, whether it's a simple web front end, you know, Memcached, uh, doing scale out workloads, doing ML, AI, uh, and HPC. That was uh, Graviton 3. Um, and Graviton 2 is just expanding the portfolio of more complex, higher performance, higher memory uh, offerings. <clears throat> and by the way, when I say they've completed the fold, that doesn't mean we're not going to see more Gravitons. We're going to see a new Graviton probably every year. <laughs> right? That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Um, um, and um, so, yeah, the, uh, the 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 beat goes on. I wish that AWS would have been a little bit more overt in how it performs versus AMD and Intel. And I can do some back of the envelope stuff, right? Because they compare to themselves, uh, but it's hard to tell. Second new piece of silicon was Tranium two. Okay, that's uh, that's in preview right now. And again to train large language models. And I think you could also do machine learning models, but you could probably do that on Trainium 1. Um, but but uh, Trainium 2 bumps it up, bumps up the performance uh, in an order order of, of magnitude. And uh, their press release was a little bit more revealing. And they said it's literally the highest performance training solution 
that exists. Okay. Wow. And and by the way, they said that about ten minutes after Nvidia's Jensen Wong getting on stage, <laughs> and yeah. they announced they announced this uh, this big alliance. Yeah. Uh, 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 together. Um, so yeah, and and I got to meet with the architects that that were there, and again, they're about ten times smarter uh, than I am. Uh, but going through, I had a bunch of NDA conversations I, I, I can't talk about, but th- th- this team just continues to crush it. Yeah, uh, yeah. They did say that they had sold 2 million Graviton, uh, made 2 million Gravitons that, that, are, that are in service. And by the way, that doesn't include Graviton 4, uh, but those are pretty hefty numbers. That's 2 million chips that Intel and AMD didn't, uh, <clears throat> didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't see. So... Uh, hats off to the uh, AWS uh, custom silicon team. I mean, yeah, they're, uh, they're crushing it. And and who would ever thought that, you know, an end customer exactly would be competitive in silicon? It's crazy, right? And like you know, Pat, I was struck with um, also what they've done with the power envelope to make it more power efficient as well. Because thank you on Trium too. Sorry, they said it was the most power efficient. Yeah. Solution yeah. too. Well, Graviton, like what, you know, Graviton 4 is like X percentage, you know, faster and, you know, 40% more power efficient. And that's really important with these these power hungry AI, you know, workloads and models, right, that are just going to, you know, spike the, the electricity bill, you know, for a lot of these enterprises. So, Well, the power budget of, of these data centers are going to get, I think we're at maybe three or four. Three percent of the planet's energy is consumed by data centers. I think we're moving to ten to fifteen. Crazy. Uh, uh, a percent. Uh, and by the way, um, the uh, part of the magic is that um, AMD and NVIDIA designs are based on GPUs, uh, mm-hmm. with some sprinkling of some ASICs, ASIC acceleration on there. Uh, Tranium and Inferentia are are giant ASICs. Okay. And ASICs will always be higher efficiency than uh, a CPU or a GPU. Uh, their only drawback is typically that they're harder to program for, right? And they're less flexible. So you have to uh, do that in the compiler level uh, or API level um, and, and tricks. But if, you know, if and when you can nail that, or if you write to a framework, in, in the case of machine learning, where you write to PyTorch um, or, or some... You know, some other other type of framework. It 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 actually uh, it actually uh, doesn't matter. Uh, I got a tour of of their Austin facility where they literally let us take pictures of um of of the chips. Now, top of the chip, you can't stealth anything, but they let me take pictures of the bottom of the chips that shows the pinouts. It shows all the uh, you know, some of the secret sauce on the connectors, uh, and they let us take pictures of their infrastructure. I mean, I saw, you know, I saw Marvell and Lattice chips on their, on their, um, on their training and inference, uh, racks. Um, so yeah, they gave us pretty much open field to look, uh, anywhere and ask any, any questions. And to me that, that shows confidence, um, but also shows the stakes are, are raising, right? Because two weeks before, Microsoft brought out uh, uh, their own AI chip, and they brought out their own uh, ARM-based uh, general purpose uh, general purpose chip. So, um, anyways, competition is good, and then you have Google Cloud with um, its TPU, and likely uh, Google is is likely going to bring out an ARM-based uh, general purpose. Uh, SOC uh, as uh, as well. So you know, and Oracle Cloud is already aligned with Ampere, right? Uh, on general uh, on general purpose. So uh, competition is good. Um, and again, final just to make a long story longer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, you love it, silicon, Pat. We'll let you talk, man. <laughs> well. It's funny. I remember six or seven years ago, nobody cared about silicon, and you know, software is eating the world, and you right. know, differentiation in silicon. And, and I've always been a big believer that you allow yourself to get commoditized. Okay, 
uh, it, 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 it doesn't, oh, it's a commodity market. No, you allowed this to happen. Right. And AWS just totally turned it on. And, and I have to, I have to give credit as well to the IP providers like ARM. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, the tool, the, the tool provider synopsis and cadence. Okay. Cause what happens now is again, there's no off the shelf IP, but, yeah. uh, ARM, uh, will develop a, a very capable CPU, uh, memory controller and stuff like that. They will, uh, put that into cadence and synopsis tool sets, and then they will test that all the way down to the foundry, like at a TSMC. So it's qualified IP, qualified IP. Right. And then the ARM business model allows you to take uh, uh, the proprietary I- I- IP by, let's say, an, uh, an AWS, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say it's a, a machine learning block that you want to put on the processor or or special security stuff and that's qualified all the way and usable in, e, in eda tools uh, synopsis and cadence all the way down uh, uh to the foundry that's why you turned what once was a two billion dollar project into a 50 or 100 million dollar project that's why right these, and by the way, they probably have 10% of the people that an Intel has per design. Mm-hmm. Right. You would think, oh my gosh, how do they do this? Talk about democratizing, you know, lowering yeah. the bar, right? Look, yeah. I, I walked in, I did this tour, and like they're taking a wafer and doing uh, a system test on it. And it's like, usually system tests, you have to take it, you have to package it, and then you have to do the system test. They're doing actual AI algorithmic functions when it's a freaking wafer. 